how much evolution are we going to have to do to get to where they're at? Um, we just need to stay on the path. We're on the same path. We are Good. absolutely on the same path. Like when you walk into it, I mean, I think one of the only differences why it looks like it's so much further advanced mm -hmm. is because people stay together. Mm -hmm. And in construction, mm -hmm. in construction, Jesse, we're constantly mixing up the family. That is my buddy, Mr. Felipe Engineer Manriquez. Y'all probably recognize his voice. And for those of you catching this on YouTube, probably recognize that handsome face from the collabo sessions that he and I did on the Lean Builder. Well, this time we get a little more personal with Mr. Felipe. Uh, he shares with us the book that he's fixing to release. You already know how much value this man brings to our industry, and he's just going to keep on doing it. Help us support him, please. And believe it or not, we ain't just talking about lean and scrumalicious, delicious stuff. We get to talking some real talk, stuff like balancing job knowledge with emotional intelligence, uh, which, you know, that might be a little soft notion, but it's extremely powerful. We also talked about the emotional baggage associated with being dishonest, uh, dishonest with yourself and dishonest with others. It's going to get a little deep, but, you know, that's how we do it, baby. So here we go. Here we are with Felipe Engineer Marriquez, host of the EBFC show, Everything Better, Faster for Construction. Did I get that right? Almost, man. The Easier, Better for Construction podcast. Yeah. Where we're rocking it every two weeks, baby. People from all up and down the construction supply chain, inside, outside, anyone and everyone working to make construction better today than it was yesterday, Jesse. Ten, four, and we were just chatting about a magical trip you had across the pond. I just crossed over the Atlantic Ocean recently, and I just found out this morning that one of the countries we were visiting just shut its borders down to American citizens. So we got <laughs> in and out just in time. I was like this close, Jesse, to being trapped in Sweden, where I would have been definitely a victim of Stockholm Syndrome. Because yeah. if I would have been locked down there, <laughs> you would have loved I, it. <laughs> I could tell you that they treated me so well, I did not want to leave. We started off in Germany. I landed in Munich, and I was able to meet some very high-level individuals practicing Lean construction, just like we do, Jesse. Mm -hmm. My friend Janosch and my friend Marco. And I was there with uh, Jason Schroeder, Spencer yep. Easton, and uh, Jason's son, Reno. Shout out to Reno. Absolutely love Reno. It's going to be amazing. He's going to study business. He's just getting started joining the working world. And he was yeah. hilarious. <laughs> we connected instantaneously. I mean, as uh, Jason and Spencer are already my boys for forever. Right. We're all brothers from another mother. So it was just really fun. Got to drive on the Autobahn, Jesse. Uh oh. With no speed limit. Oh, watch out. Okay. I lived. We lived. <laughs> you I made did it back. And I got passed up by, uh, you know, a lot of uh, very high powered automobiles because mm -hmm. we were we were out there just having a good old time. Yeah. Yeah. I bet it was fun. I, it was, I got to see some of the posts and stuff. It's like, man, that, that seems like some good company for an uh, amazing mission. And a ton of learning was taking place. Ton of learning. And the, the main connector of all of us, Jesse, is that we all believe in learning. And we yep. all agree that things can get better every day. Every day, things can get better. And they do get better. Yes. And so like-minded individuals working together, now with technology, Jesse, we can cross borders, time zones, it's no problem. As my friend right. Yanash always says, this is no problem. <laughs> we can solve anything. Uh, we got it, baby. Yeah, and, and I got to, to... Oh, go ahead, go ahead Jesse. Go ahead. No, just everybody, it, it, I, the group that you went with, they're kind of aligned with the title of the easier, better, faster for construction idea, huh? Easier, better for construction. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely, Jesse. It's everyone's aligned and and they're open invitations to our friends to join the podcast. And uh, some of those will be coming out 
uh, this year and next. Nice. Be many opportunities. And there's also like, I want to just preview. There are some connections to these high level players working in industry in general contracting, um, the owner side, industrial construction, other construction, and even BMW mm. car assembly and production. I got mm -hmm. to tour the BMW production line behind the scenes in Munich. And I got to see exactly how they are employing lean every single day. Oh man. I bet oh. it was sexy, huh? <laughs> oh my God. I was in heaven. I told, uh, my friends at BMW, I said, now I have to say at Toyota and BMW. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's so how big of a gap is there between our industry and that, um, what just, what's the word? How much evolution are we going to have to do to get to where they're at? Um, we just need to stay on the path. We're on the same path. We are Good. absolutely on the same path. Like when you walk into it, I mean, I think one of the only differences why it looks like it's so much further advanced mm -hmm. is because people stay together. Mm -hmm. And in construction, mm -hmm. in construction, Jesse, we're constantly mixing up the family. Yes. Like we come together for a project, you know, for on average projects of the types of companies that we work at. A typical job is about two years. So yeah. every two years, we're making new families and breaking it up. We're breaking mm -hmm. up those project teams that don't get to stay together yep. for a lot of different reasons. Whereas in manufacturing, people are way more stable and they get yeah. to stay together. And if you're going to make a career out of something, you want to make a good go at it. And yes. so there's a massive incentive for personal, intrinsic and extrinsic reasons to make it amazing. So yes. They're going to be further ahead whenever you drop in. And I, I recommend to anybody that gets the chance to tour a lean production facility of any kind whatsoever, it be it construction or manufacturing, take advantage and go see it yes. because it's going to shift your mind Absolutely. from what you think is possible to new possibilities. And that's mm -hmm. what happened to me. Like I saw things, Jesse, that, you know, I've read about it in books. I've seen videos. And when you're in the space yes. surrounded by the people doing it and you just feel it yes. like we were inside this one part where there's a lot of welding machines and I'm standing and I just turn my head just like this much, Jesse, watch my head mm. this much. Yep, yep. And I was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. There's the supermarket. There is yep. the supermarket that I've read about in John Shook's book, managing mm -hmm. to learn and learning to see with Mike Rother. I'm like, there it is. That's the supermarket. And I asked our guide, and I said, is that the supermarket for all the parts that people need in this area? And he's like, yes, it is with a big smile. Like, yeah, yeah. like these concepts work and we can use supermarket concepts, even in construction. We've done that. Right. I've done that with teams and parking structures and just having that little idea of like, if I could go someplace and get what I need and it's replenished in a certain way that feeds what we're doing, putting work in place, that's been multi-million dollar impact on projects. Yep. in construction. So these ideas in manufacturing 100% carry over into what we do every day, Jesse. So there is hope for us. Yes, so sir. Listeners out there. Um, I, 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 you said something that I think is really key in our industry. A lot of the concepts like to, we'll stay with supermarkets are conceptual. Not right. very many of us have seen it in action. And when you see it, is so two things when I've toured manufacturing facilities that are on their lean path is one, you can see it and it's directly in front of you and it's in order. It's like, holy, this is it. This is the whole thing that I've been trying to understand and wrap my head around. Right. And the other thing that stood out to me is they don't talk in the jargon and the terms that we are trying to understand. It's just their job. Right. It's just the way they do their work. And, and to your point about the family stays together longer, 100%. The, the work is the work, but when people come in and come out, we got to realign, we got to build relationships, we got to establish trust, we got to establish uh, communication expectations, and that takes a long time. <laughs> but uh, and and what are the people we visited? We I went to go visit uh, Marco at uh, Weisenbergerbau in Karlsruhe, Germany, which is not close to Munich at all. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's a long drive. <laughs> okay. 
And uh, I wish I could remember better, but I think I was I was averaging like five hours of sleep a night because I was waking up so excited every day I couldn't sleep. Yeah. Plus the jet lag of being on the yeah. other side of the planet. Yeah. And uh, I kept asking. Marco was just full transparency, completely wide open. They're a general contractor doing residential construction in uh, in that part of Germany, and which is basically the uh, the southwestern part of Germany. And they're moving north, moving north up, and then they're going to move. Uh, towards the center and then to the east and and they're growing and they're growing because of what they've been doing with lean construction mm -hmm. and they have buy-in from the executives and they have you know people on the front lines and they have people supporting the learning the coaching the experiments all over the company mm. with with subcontractors trade partners and they said trade partners just like we say trade partners yep yep and it's taken time it's mm. taken time. Like we, we, we looked in, in awe and, and number one, shout out to Marco. His wife's a scrum master. Nice. Love that. I love to see scrum yeah. masters like everywhere. They're using scrum all throughout the management side. We, we toured through their corporate office yeah. and I saw scrum boards in every center of, uh, every work cluster of people. Mm -hmm. There are scrum boards, Jesse. I was in scrum heaven. Jason Schroeder, put a video out on uh, YouTube about this under the lean tech channel. Yep. And they, he does pan to me with a big giant, uh, goofy smile on my face <laughs> as we're coming across like the 55th scrum board in the office. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and the thing that Marco said, like as impressive as it is, he's like, I want you all to know that it took time. Yes. It took time to get to that level. And I'm, I'm excited. I've been consistent with scrum Jesse, as you know, for a long time, you were, yep in one of my early scrum courses back uh, with LCI in San Antonio. Yep. And and we're still at it today. I just finished a course yesterday. Yes. With some more, heard. Yeah. With some more partners and, and people said like, they were like, wow, you're just, you're just like, so into this. And I said, yeah, because it's liberating. Yes. It liberates people. Yes. And so I have infinite enthusiasm for it because it helps people do more of what they want to do. Yes. And Absolutely. so I, I love it. And uh, seeing it there and just hearing that it takes time just reinforces uh, what I've been doing. And Marco is two years ahead of me. He's like, yeah. he's been he's been at it for eight years. I've been full time at Lean Transformation for six years. And we're not that far apart. But our, our, our company size, Jesse, the hold on one second here. I got so excited. I kicked the I kicked my desk. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like the, the company size between like where I work at McCarthy, we're almost 5,000 employees, uh, full time and, and craft workers. And then his company, they're only, you know, a fraction of that size. Right. And so we know, we know from our scrum training, Jesse, that there is this concept of communication channels, which is, you know, part of psychology there, the, the fewer people you have the faster you can communicate and the quicker you can make changes effectively, the more people it creates some complexity and there's different things you have to do, but that's, that's getting too nerdy for what we want to talk about sure, today. Sure. But if you're, if you're out there listening, learning to missed up's family, it's just like your own family. If your family, if you're in a family of two, um, it's very easy for both of you to get on the same page versus being in like, like my family on my dad's side, you know, it's, I can't, there's probably like 12 Felipe's just in the Felipe name. So for all of us to get on the same page, plus all the cousins, aunts and uncles, you know, brothers and, and different family, it takes longer to get on the same page because you have to have more conversations and experiences together. Cause nice. I can tell you, Jesse, I could tell you how awesome scrum is, but until you experience it with me, yes. it's not the same. Yes. Agreed. So I'm going to give it another shot because I screwed up the name of your show twice already. So let's see. Uh, the Easier, Better for Construction show. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you got it, baby. Perfect. Would the EBFC show, <clears throat> excuse me, would the EBFC show have manifested without Scrum? No. No way. Because in order to, if you think about it, I have a full time job. Yep. And uh, you run a podcast, so mm -hmm. you know, you know, and I know 
how many hours it takes. And we have a friend, like our friend Jason, runs a podcast that puts shows out on the daily. Daily. That is daily. Deep. And you and I are both like uh, every uh, time we think about it, like, oh my, like your eyes open yeah. up. My eyes yeah. bug out too. Negative. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah. So it, it does, it takes time. It takes time. And so using the Scrum framework allows me to manage, you know, all that I'm doing at work, plus serve my audience, yes. plus honor my guests. And I, I go into a cycle. My sprint cycle for the show is two weeks. It's a two week yes. cycle. My, my work cycle in my day to day is on a five day cycle, Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. And I, I work with teams that are on a monthly cycle where they go, you know, calendar change, like a uh, first day of the month to the end of the month. So they're on a, a rolling, you know, 22 work day or call it a 30 day calendar day cycle and then variations in between. And until I understood work as a cycle, yes, I, I was just barely treading water. I mean, scrum yes. was an absolute game changer. And I had learned about lean construction, Jesse, for like five years, maybe six years, even before I had ever heard about what scrum was Yep. and lean helped me get better. But Scrum exponentially helped me jump and do things that I could not do with just what I learned about Lean. And that's just a function of how I was. It's different for other people. Sure. Yeah, there are other people that uh, have found other things, and it's made massive improvements for them, like tack time uh, and other visual controls, Kanban for some people, which is just uh, right. you know using visual signboards to help them make decisions and pull work ahead, limiting work in progress. I mean, all those cool things. The thing about Scrum is that Scrum brings in some intentional feedback loops yes. so that it forces you to see how you're handing work off. And that was a big game changer for me. That allowed me to, because I had known what waste was. I knew about right. the, eight, the eight wastes. But once I saw from the customer's perspective of the people receiving my work, Jesse, totally changed where I put my time and energy made me much more effective yep. and allowed me to do other things like start a podcast, serve yep. on multiple boards, get involved in other companies outside of McCarthy, volunteer my time at organizations like the Lean Construction Institute, the Construction Industry Institute, and some universities. Right. So all, all of those things happen because of how I manage myself through flow with delivering value, not by keeping myself busy. Mm. What, what our friend in Sweden, Nicholas Modig calls the efficiency paradox. Mm. So balancing flow with resource efficiency. Yeah. And it is, it is a balance. Absolutely. A constant balance. It's not like you balance it out and it stays there. Yeah. It takes and, constant maintenance. And the balance between those two things, resource efficiency, like if I consider myself a resource and I'm awake for, you know, 16, 18 hours a day, if I just work to keep myself occupied for 18 hours a day, that doesn't have any kind of function or correlation on what people need from me, yep. what I'm delivering, how am I transforming the world? Now, if I work to flow, to deliver value, flow towards value delivery, yep. and I try to balance those two, I'm going to be in tension all the time. Right. I'm going to be in tension with being in a state of flow and then also utilizing myself. And so that, when I say putting those two in balance, I'm creating tension like like a bow and arrow pulling on a string. And mm. it, it's creating a lot of potential. And as I let that go and and put forward value delivery, it's constantly like a, a reinforcing cycle of more amazing and fun life. Yes, <laughs> as you know, sir. Jesse, you've I never do. talked to me and I've been like in a bad mood or having a bad day. It's always... Right. I'm always like energy 11, baby. Yeah, man. That's the only way to be. But you got to figure out how to get there. So, you know, Felipe, we, I, I feel like I have just a backstage pass, VIP access, because you and I, we've done the, the seven, eight collabo sessions yes. uh, and, and sharing all of our um, trauma <laughs> in the industry. <laughs> That's a perfect uh, word for it, Jesse. Right, evoked by the Lean Builder, we got to have a conversation with Joe and Keon, which which I think was awesome. It was a beautiful conversation. Um, we collaborated on the Construction Change Makers live stream uh, deals that you've had out on YouTube. And we'll be doing more of those, Jesse. I just got uh, 
two times Adam Hoots this week has said it's time for another one. So it's there'll be more. For, there yeah. are more coming. Yeah, beautiful. And and that inspired me to do to go out on the live stream edge myself. We did one uh, a few weeks back on uh, Gamba based improvement, and I'm fixing to do one with Miss Jennifer Lacey nice. on five um, S in relationships. Oh, look at you. <laughs> oh, watch out. We start next Saturday, um, 8 a.m. Central, and we'll be going on every other Saturday. And, and to your point, you know, when I took the scrum class with you here in San Antonio, I'm like, ah, because I was trying to do like apply some of the last planner stuff to my life. Yes. And it, it, it translated, but it wasn't as fluid. And then, you know, I but had been introduced to personal Kanban. And same thing is like, okay, I get it. But the reflect the loop, the feedback loop was right. kind of, it was just what absent. Um, and when I got introduced to, to scrum in that class, I was like, okay, this, this is exactly what, this is the framework that's going to help me. And, and I'm following in your shadow. So it's awesome. Cause I get to learn from you and you've been very gracious in, in sharing your knowledge with me and coaching me through some stuff. I've been able to incorporate all these other things, right? Serve my community, be a better brother, be a better son. Um, And that's not hard to do. Like, all I have to do is not be a jerk because normally I am. But um, (laughs) do the podcast, do live stream, speak. I'm going to be speaking with some students at San Jose, uh, from San Jose University. Oh, Uh, I know that. I know the group, the AGC student chapter. Oh, yeah. got it, the AGC student chapter. And so all these other things that I used to have to say no to or be stressed to the kilt because I did want to offer or provide value, but because I was so busy, I I couldn't, or it was just, it was not a pleasurable, entirely pleasurable existence. Whereas now it's like, yeah, baby, like, let's do it. Let's have some fun. It's going to be good. We're going to have a damn good time. Um, so for anybody read the book, uh, but getting twice the work done in half the time. Yeah. And I got a surprise for y'all too. Uh-oh. I got uh, Uh-oh. my own book coming out. Damn, this is just a prototype, baby. Construction like Scrum. Construction Scrum will be coming out this year, 2021. Boom. It's going to be phenomenal. And we've got a ton of free stuff. If you want to learn more about Scrum, visit the ebfcshow.com. There is a blog mm-hmm. on my site. I got I borrowed inspiration from you, Jesse, and started Uh-oh. blogging. Uh-oh. Watch <laughs> out, baby. Come on. And so I've got uh, a few articles on things that have been very beneficial to me, such as Scrum. There are some videos there as well. The live streams that Jesse mentioned are all on that uh, website. So you just click on the top header for live stream. And you can watch Jesse and I getting after it, talking about different concepts as long as, as well as with other change makers. Mm -hmm. And so the resources are there, tons of free resources. And of course, I'm still always teaching uh, Scrum to Scrum Masters that want it because that's there. And a lot of people want to get certification and get a really deep dive in. We're doing that every single month. And so that's open to anybody. Lost you. Okay, you're back. Oh, you lost me for a second? Yeah, you said it's open to everybody, and then it stopped. Yeah. Here, I'll, I'll go again. At www.theebfcshow.com, or you can just punch in your favorite browser, theebfcshow.com, ebfcshow.com. You'll find free resources on the blog, things that have served me well, Jesse, such as Scrum, A3 mm. Thinking, and more Lean Concepts. I've got useful articles and some how-tos there. And every single month, I'm teaching future Scrum Masters how to use Scrum at a high level with Lean. Compliments of Scrum Inc. I am a Scrum Inc. approved instructor for Scrum Masters and product owners. So we do teach both. Right now, we've got Scrum Master courses every single month. So check that out on the site. Tons of information there to learn more as well as free resources, always, it's always there for free. Just use some curiosity, cuddle up with your favorite beverage. Mine is a coffee. I like it black. And then uh, read on, watch some videos, get inspired and start trying it out. And Jesse, just like you, I'm always available to people that have questions. 
I even had um, a partner in Florida and I call everybody who works in the construction industry a partner Mm -hmm. because we're all in the same industry together. Jesse, did you know that one out of six people working today in the world work in construction? I did not know. One out of six. So we have a massive worldwide construction family and family. If you're out there and you need some time, hit me up on LinkedIn. I'm more than happy to connect, answer a quick question. We can jump on the phone or exchange emails and uh, you don't need to reinvent the wheel by yourself. I have benefited tremendously from some powerful mentors that have just been so giving with their time. And it's had such a massive impact on me. I'm doing the same thing, taking a page out of my mentors books and sharing with everyone that I can, anyone that's curious, drop me a line. Let's get crazy and do something. Ten, folks. Well, I think it it can be said that we are lean fanatics and we want to help the industry. And most of the people that know us know all about that. Yes. And and so, but we're also kind of human beings on the side also. Um, and so with that, behind the lean stuff, yeah, you know, I want I want to help people understand, uh, give them a glimpse into get to know you. Oh, you want to peel back the curtain? I, I want to peel back some of that curtain, baby. Um, and so, you know, what, what should people know about you, Felipe? I mean, we talked about the lean, we talked about the scrum. Uh, what else? Yeah, I think uh, people should know that I grew up in a uh, blue collar family back in the beautiful Chicago, Illinois. And depending on uh, what time of day you hit me on, I pronounce that word differently. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm actually ESL. I'm English as a second language. I grew up speaking Spanish first, even though I was born in the United States. You can check my birth certificate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in my household, um, we grew up speaking Spanish in the house and then went to, to school on the south side of Chicago in the suburbs, just barely outside the city. Yeah. And, uh, it was, it was interesting. I had a good, a, a cool upbringing where it was always mixed cultures. So mm. all the time, different cultures. And, uh, you know, I was never in the majority group. So, and then the same thing happened when I went to high school, I went to a predominantly black high school, a couple of towns over from where we were, it's just how the lines were drawn, yep. uh, going through the public school system and then going to university Um, I went to the University of Illinois at Chicago and I studied first computer engineering, Jesse. Did you Ah, know that? I did not know that. Are you surprised now? Like how nerdy I am with the tech? I'm not surprised at all. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I I built, uh, I built my first computer when I was 14 years old from scratch. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've just loved playing with tech all the time, even though I am, as Jesse knows, a post-it note fanatic. I always have the notes ready on the ready. You got to try these out. Ooh, dry those are erase pretty. post-it notes. Dry erase. I like that. Yeah, baby. I've had those uh, a couple of times, but I've not uh, not had a, a decent pack. So I think I need to experiment with that a little bit more. And then I went to, uh, I was in school during Y2K. I changed majors to electrical engineering. And then I toured a construction site with a friend of mine that was in school working for, for Turner, where you used to work, Jesse. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I fell in love with construction. And I, yeah. I got a job there and I worked in construction and have been for over two decades, but, uh, my parents were, you know, not, uh, college educated. All of mm-hmm. my, on my dad's side, most of my aunts and uncles all went to university and we've got, you know, doc, we've got nurses, teachers, all kinds of professionals. And on, uh, on my mom's side of the family, we've got people also working in the construction industry. We've got musicians. I mean, we've got all kinds of people in the family doing all kinds of different things, even some politicians, Jesse. Oh, watch out. I know it, <laughs> even some politicians and it's been amazing. Uh, and on my wife's family, you know, some professors and, uh, and other teachers and all, all the mix of everything. And so it's been a blessing to have so many different people in the family for inspiration growing up. And yeah. we, and we just kept, uh, we, I, luckily, my wife, amazing, amazing human being, my best friend, 
was incredibly supportive of all the things I like to try because I do like to try things. And I, yeah. I tend towards following my passion, as you know, Jesse. Mm -hmm. So people that don't know me until you get to know me, you'll realize that, yes, yes, it's true. I do follow my passions daily. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been incredible. I think one of the things, you know, aside from that background growing up in the South Side, and I lived and worked in Chicago in construction for a while before coming to California in the late 2000, I think it was 2008, 2009. It's getting so far away, Jesse. It's hard to remember exactly yeah, which year yeah. it was. <laughs> you know? I lived in Southern California for a while, and now uh, we're just north of Sacramento, a beautiful area here where I say, I tell everybody it's the land of lean honey because yeah. it's just a flowing <laughs> I think it, I think it's really flowing out from Berkeley, California, Jesse, believe yeah. it or not. Yep. There is a lot of cool stuff coming out of Berkeley, University of California, Berkeley, that's influencing lean thinkers worldwide. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, people, I didn't, I didn't even know what lean was until yeah. I was halfway through my career. I was all hundred percent traditional, you know, working in construction on the project management side. I've been a superintendent before on high-rise construction in Chicago. I've been a cost engineer. I've been a field engineer. I've been in many different roles inside of the industry. And uh, I've even gone and gotten my advanced degree, uh, my MBA. And now I'm getting, I'm getting some peer pressure from some of my friends over across the Atlantic to get my PhD in Scrum, which I was just okay. like, it sounds, it sounds so amazing, Jesse. It's yeah. Doesn't well, it sound amazing? It does. And I imagine you've got plenty of case studies, firsthand experience that you you would be, whatever your um, dissertation would be, would bring tremendous value and real yeah. observations contextualized to our industry. Oh, and the which... funny thing is, Jesse, like in, in my company, I've been accused of being too academic. Mm -hmm. Now... When I work with project teams, because that's what I do day in and day out, I work right. primarily with project teams and support on how the business works, but uh, I can connect instantaneously with people at the front, right right at the front line. And we even did this, we got tested, uh, Jason and I got tested in Germany. We got to tour behind the scenes with a general contractor, and we instantaneously connected with frontline workers. Yeah. And and that's, and that's like, I think that's a testament because Jason, like myself, we've worked in so many different parts of the industry. Yeah. I don't lose touch with where the value is created, yeah. even though I love to learn and I like school and I like training myself and learning all the time that everybody else isn't that, that way. And you, right. and you don't have to go to school to learn these concepts. You can right. learn them on the job, right where you're at. You can watch a YouTube video. You could be listening to this podcast. And you yes. can get inspired and go try and do something that changes your whole trajectory. Yeah. So let's let's lower the bar. There's no pressure to have to do all these other things. I'm just following what I love to do. And I understand that the paths are different for everybody. Yeah. I totally understand that. You know, I here's my hypothesis, Felipe. You mentioned that you were an ESL learner um, and in overcoming that or working through that helps you maintain an empathy for other people that are learning from different different backgrounds. And so on that note, what was it like? Can you do you remember? Can you describe what it was like going through that transition? Oh yeah. I mean when I was in you know in the house when you're a kid and you just grow up in your family, you don't know what the outside world's like. Mm -hmm. When I went to school, Jesse, I wasn't a, a straight A student through elementary school. Okay. And, uh, and even through junior high, I was kind of like, uh, I wasn't a bad kid, but I definitely had seen the principal's office more than a handful of times. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and I did have a couple of in-school detentions for, you know, various different reasons, mostly related to believe it or not, Jesse running my mouth. <laughs> Can I'm you so believe surprised. it? So, so, so shocking. <laughs> and then when I went to high school, it was, uh, you know, something just clicked and I became a straight A student mm. and I graduated valedictorian. I, and I, I tell people that I'm a slow learner and I look at all those years through eighth grade was like my ramp up to learning how to learn better. Yeah. And then 
I did much better. And then when I got to college, I got, I was surrounded by some super A players. I went to engineering school, uh, studied electrical, ultimately graduated electrical engineering. And, uh, some of the people that I was in school with had known that they wanted to be electrical engineer, like 10 years before they got to school. Like they had, they had been like working towards it forever. And when I had looked at what to study, I literally just looked at all the options. I was like, ah, this looks interesting. And I kind of just picked it that way. Yeah, yeah. You know, it wasn't like I had a ton of analysis on it, mm-hmm. which is totally different from how I approach things now. It's been an evolution and, yeah. and it was a struggle. And sometimes I think, because I can think in two languages, right. I don't, I don't translate in my mind. Now I will occasionally struggle for words, but uh, I can think in two languages and it, it does actually affect how I see and think of things because of the right. two languages and the language being Spanish. For those of you that can't figure out, que si hablo español, si, si no entienden. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. And it's been, uh, it's been good to have yeah. that challenge. And uh, I always tell people like, if you're having a problem or you're struggling, that's amazing information and opportunity. And all the times in my life, Jesse, when I've had to learn something and I wasn't, and I didn't do it well, it created conditions for growth. Mm-hmm. I have, I have no examples, zero examples of amazing things happening by accident or things been just giving to me. I have incredible stories and experiences where I've had to grow and expand my skill set and learn and make mistakes and do it again and say the wrong thing and have to apologize to people and make amends or to, mm, you I've know, done that once or twice. <laughs> yeah. I know you have, <laughs> I know you have Jesse. Oh, and so, you know, all of those things make for a much more interesting life and experiences. Well, and you said you, uh, uh, an arrangement of words that you used was you learned how to learn. Right. Uh, and, and I think, you know, learning that. So I had a different experience when my mom brought us up and she did not, we did, she was intentional about us not speaking Spanish because her experience when she was in school is she would get punished. She would get in trouble for speaking Spanish. And so because of that, she was very focused on us only speaking English. And, and I remember the feeling when I'd visit my dad's side of the family who primarily spoke Spanish or my grandparents, my mom's parents, who spoke Spanish most of the, at home. I mean, they, they were bilingual, but at home, right. it was always Spanish. And I struggled to communicate. And I remember the, that the insecurities or those weird feelings about like, I'm doing something wrong, or I'm being treated like I'm doing something wrong. And I don't have a lot of control over that. Uh, it, like, it's not my fault, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so that, that feeling... And then figuring out how to overcome it and, and figuring out like, okay, I, I see what the gap is. Let me do something about it. Uh, and that's that little sensation, that little feeling that I experienced because I couldn't speak Spanish. Um, I've recognized that feeling now as just a, a call to learn, a call to expand my skill set, a call to expand my knowledge base. Cause that feeling does arise in different arenas. You know, when, when hell, you know, our industry, uh, or when I started getting involved with the school districts, when I started volunteering and, and, and speaking to students and speaking to teachers and parents about the careers in the industry, public speaking all of a sudden, like I couldn't drop an F-bomb every other word. I know. And, it's so... and, right? Like, oh, I got to <laughs> like, you or, or just that all of those experiences at the forefront, the very first time I get to the edge of that comfort zone. I remember back to when I'd get the snicker or the side comment about me not being able to speak Spanish. Uh, And I feel like that equipped me to be able to deal with all that other stuff that we get to deal with on a daily basis. On the daily. And that that right there, Jesse, is perfect. Discomfort. Mm -hmm. Discomfort. I mean, when I'm working with people in teams and And sometimes I tell people like, Hey, we're going to do this thing. When I get invited to a project to make an improvement or to help them go through something or learn a new skill, I tell them like, you're going to look at me at times and think like I'm a genius or magical. Right. It's like the wizard wizard or something like that. And I said, 
and let's not let's let's lower that there's going to be times where really what's happening is that I'm just comfortable because I've been training myself yeah. to, to learn and be very adaptive in all these situations. And that's why I can, you know, drop in and help teams no matter what phase they're in and make improvements because I'm already okay with being uncomfortable yeah. and discomfort. I've just decided every day and I'm not the only person, there's a lot of people on planet earth that, that take this approach. Like we just decide Every day, let's spend some time being uncomfortable and let's get closer to discomfort so that we can grow. And that allows me to, to do what I need to do. And I tell people like, I I watch them. I watch as we're, as we're trying to do something new and it's like, they're not quite getting it at first. or they're struggling. And I say, oh, you're experiencing discomfort. And it's because if you, if you don't experience discomfort and you just stay the same, then there's no change. You stay the same. And whatever trajectory you're on, that's just what you're going to get. Mm-hmm. But if you, if you open yourself up and say, okay, I'm going to be uncomfortable. I can say, I don't know. I can say, I'm not sure. Those two phrases are yes. signaling discomfort and, and some awareness that there's a gap, like you yep. said before. And so if you open yourself up to that discomfort, like, and some of us don't have a choice, we just get lucky mm. to not have the ability to just be comfortable. Yep. And so that that is something that it's available to anyone listening, anyone listening every day. Intentionally, I decide that I have to do something that I don't want to do so that I can experience some level of discomfort and grow. Yeah. And I don't, you know, it's not like I'm, I jump off with my house and say like, I'm going to sprout <laughs> wings and fly, you yeah. know, use, use some, some of your experience to know what some good limitations are for you. But do absolutely do something that's a little, even just a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. That's phenomenal advice for for all of our people out there. I know that we're going to have a a flood of young listeners. Uh, I got an uh, uh, interview with Miss Krista Ackles, who is a program manager at Construction Careers Academy, um, where it's a high school. And they're 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 teaching kids and bringing them into the industry. So it was an awesome conversation, and and I hope that all of her students jump in and and catch after her episode, listen to this episode, <laughs> and catch that bit of advice. So get out of your comfort zone, go to the edge, because that's where the growth happens. So Felipe, when you you said you built your first computer when you were fourteen. Um, what was your career aspiration back then, back in them days? Do you back in them days. Oh, I do remember, Jesse. I was convinced at that time that I was going to go work for the power company. Ah, I was okay. absolutely convinced. And I, even though I was building computers, I loved and I've always loved since the first time I took apart an extension cord and made sparks in my bedroom <laughs> <laughs> and did not burn the house down. Yeah, yeah. I know mom and dad aren't listening, but they know the story. <laughs> they know the story. I bet they do. I said, man, there's something cool going on here in these wires. Mm. And so I've always been fascinated with electricity. And so I thought, uh, I'm going to definitely go work for the power company. And when I went to school, even as a computer engineer, I thought there would be a way for me to make that happen. Right. And it just never happened. <laughs> like every time I had to... We had to take courses, the power company courses, like where I grew up in Chicago, Commonwealth Edison is a very big company there. And they're one of the largest employers of people getting that type of training at the time, you know, electrical engineers and that sort. I did not get the right courses to get in. And Ah. it just, I didn't have the, uh, there's, there were like different ways to register and the circumstances just didn't allow for it. So what ended up happening to me is I ended up taking a lot of courses on uh, control systems, feedback loops, even some industrial engineering, which is yep. one of the foundations for good mm-hmm. lean thinking. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and different things like that, uh, communication theory, signal theory for uh, electrical systems. And so all of those things, you know, shifted me towards something else. And then when I went into construction, so I, I really got out of school and went straight to construction. I was always gravitating towards the mechanical electrical plumbing trades because it was closer to what I was used to. 
Mm -hmm. But it again, circumstances on the first job, Jesse, they're like, oh, all you're going to do is close this punch list out. <laughs> so, yeah. Or you're going to just do this data entry. You're going to just take these daily reports that are handwritten and uh, get them into prologue because yeah, yeah, that's important. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so, yeah. and so I, I, I shifted, but it created a learning opportunity where I got to learn about structure, how things come together, what defects are at a very high level. Like I got to find in a 12 story building, I literally got to find every single defect. Mm. It was like an Easter egg hunt and they were just everywhere. Right. And, but it taught me how to working with the foreman to close the issues out and make the corrections. It taught me how things actually come together and fit. Yeah. Which is something I did not learn in school, but I learned it on the job. And then like two years later, Jesse, people started guessing. I would make people get like, guess what I learned? Guess what I went to school for? Cause mm -hmm. you know, when you're young, people like to say what you go to school for. Right. And I was getting confused for being a structural engineer, which I really? was like, Oh yeah. I, I took okay. it always as a compliment. Yeah. Yeah. Because I understood how the structures went, how things got put together at a higher level. So I was like, this is good. This is, this is good. This is a good thing. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, I, you know, you talk about punch lists and I know how miserable that can be. Uh, but one of the benefits uh, and unspoken benefits that I think rather I know you capitalized on and too many people don't is tracking and closing those punch list items gives you in an enormous amount of cycles, an enormous amount of reps in relationship building, right? in communicating with human beings and expanding the way in which you communicate, understanding personalities. What do you, it, is that, uh, is that like an outer space thought, Philippe? No, nope, you're completely accurate. I mean, <laughs> when I was on that job, I started as an intern and because of the relationships that I made with closing out those items, mm -hmm. the owner said, we want Felipe to stay on and finish this through. So I got to transfer from intern to cooperative education so I was going to school part-time and working part-time. Mm -hmm. And then that led to a full-time offer because of the relationships. Yeah. So a hundred percent, Jesse, you're, you're right on, you are on point. Ten four, but we, we don't talk enough about that. We you know, I was having a conversation with Adam, one of your pupils over the past couple of days. Um, and, and we, we got into a discussion about the soft stuff and and like the real stuff and i you know i straight up i'm biased towards the size soft stuff relationships culture how do people function how are people going to react how are they going to feel um and some people are biased towards building stuff like we build 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 output and and i i we need both and there's probably another component in there somewhere that we haven't really um been able to figure out but the human side and the process side of executing the work are 100% like they're not synonymous. If, if we just focus on, on the squishy stuff, we're not going to get a lot done. And if we just focus on the getting done stuff, we're not going to have the people to do it. Or we'll right. have the body, but we won't have the heart and soul. And we need that. Um, and so I, you know, I wonder, you know, we got this curriculum, we got all these program, uh, ed these education systems out there that are teaching people things, what would it take to be focused and, and develop or teach people the other stuff, the communication, the relationship building, the listening? Uh, I feel like we got a long way to go before we actually have something in place that can accomplish both. We do. We absolutely do. And I mean, one of my mentors, Jesse, is a gentleman by the name of William Edwards Deming. Mm -hmm. And Deming said that uh, in the system of profound knowledge, psychology is one of the core components. Yep. And he said, you don't have to be eminent in any area of the system as he described it, but you do need to have knowledge of it. And psychology is both understanding yourself and yes. understanding yourself in relation to others. Yes. It's both. Yes. And so I spend a lot of my time. A lot of people don't know this, Jesse, but now your your listeners are getting some behind the curtain. We're still behind the curtain, baby. We're still behind the curtain. I spend a lot of time studying psychology 
so that I can be better with myself and better with other people. Yeah. It's critical. Actually, I, this actually happened. True story, Jesse. This February of this year, I went to a job site in Nevada and I met uh, the team and that I did an introduction to who I am and you know, so what, why I'm here. And I was there for an entire week. We were working on in, improving some flow and throughput. And uh, one of the superintendents came up to me afterwards and he said, uh, what school did you study psychology at? Mm -hmm. And I said, I didn't study psychology. He's like, oh my God. He's like, you sound like a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was yeah. like, okay, things I've been confused for structural engineer and psychologist. <laughs> That's, not bad. That's not bad. I'm not going to say what I've been confused for, except for, um, except for a, uh, stripper. I've been confused for a stripper oh, yeah. a couple of I could times, see but that. that was a long time ago. <laughs> I could totally see that. I've heard, I've heard stories about your dancing capabilities. <laughs> Oh man, can't get enough of that. You know, one you you pointed to something that I want to say so that our listeners, especially the young folks that are going to be jumping on, um, I, I think it's critical is one criteria that I have for the people that I include in my circle. Which, if you didn't know this, Felipe, you're in my circle. Of course, I know, man, baby. <laughs> We're is, on a we're on a hug heart to heart hugging basis already. Yes, yes, you complete me. Um, is this the criteria? Is this there's a lot of people out there that are very smart and committed to digesting information and reading books and expanding their knowledge. And I, those are the type of people I I like hanging around. Now the people that get in the circle are the people that do that from with the purpose of further understanding themselves. So they internalize what they're learning to better understand how they function and how they operate and how they impact other people. And they use that knowledge to have uh, more responsible ripples of impact. And so for example, have you read uh, Jocko Willink's book? Um, damn it. We're, what's Extreme Ownership. Extreme Ownership. Thank you. Extreme Ownership. Yes, I have. Okay. How many people have you met that have read the book and said, man, gives you a list of names of people that should read the book? Oh, many people. Yeah. Many. I've recommended that book uh, many times and I've reread it, Jesse, several yep. times. Yes. And you reread it for yourself. That's right. Now, so that's the, like, to, to, to delineate the difference. You see, and I was, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that, Jesse. Look over my shoulder. You see those three white plaques over my shoulder? Yes, I do. Two out of three of those are pages that I retyped from Jocko's book and framed on the wall. Nice. Nice. So some stuff that you adhere to and is part of just your, your diet of existing. I come in here and I look at those and I, I reread. Those were like things that really stood out. Like when Jocko talks about standards in particular, that's one of them. Mm -hmm. One of them is his phrase on standards. And he says that standards are not what you preach. They are what you tolerate. Oh, yeah. It's not what you say. It's what you accept. Yeah, baby. Yes. And so... That's an, that is evidence, Felipe, that you read it and you internalized the message, the, the principle, the thought, the idea to help you function at a higher level. Where a lot of people will read the book and not internalize anything. And they'll say, ah, this information this person needs. So they deflect ownership. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they deflect ownership and say, if some, if everybody else would read this book, things would be better for me. Like, no, yeah, fool. like yeah. you gotta do it. It's about you, man. Yeah. And I love uh, people. If you're listening, Jocko has a podcast that's phenomenal. Oh yeah. And I listen to it all the time. I mean, that's why I keep the microphone right here in my face. Cause you got to get after it, baby. <laughs> I love it. Those guys are, they're amazing. They were part of the several people out there that helped me get the courage up to start the podcast. I love, uh, uh and let's, let's give a shout out to echo Charles. Echo Charles, yep. echo Charles. We love you. Echo Charles. Yes. Yes. And you know, 
Yeah, you know, when I started watching their YouTube stuff, I was like, holy moly, that dude's a beast. Like he's he's yeah. a monster. And but his personality, just hearing him, he doesn't sound like a big oh, yeah. giant super rip beast animal, you know? <laughs> yeah. You see like son of a gun. Okay. Know, Echo Charles has biceps that are like the size of my head. Yes. Yes. And, oh, and of course Jocko does as well. I mean, they oh, they get after it. Jocko's always I mean, he says his motivation every day is that he's he's training himself to be ready because he knows that somewhere his enemy is training and he will not let his enemy overtake him. Yes. Yes. You got to be prepared. And you Always don't prepare ready. it. You can't prepare at the last minute. You got to prepare every single damn day. So along the lines of. Uh, but let me let me go back on that, Jesse. So yeah. when I when I read books or I learn something and I've had uh, one of our friends comment this on me. She says that every time I talk to you, because we don't talk all the time, she's like, every time I talk to you, you're like jumped in what you've done. And I said, mm -hmm. yes, because everything I learn, I test it right away. Yeah. I test it right away. And I don't, I don't prescribe things to people. Like sometimes people will say like, Hey, what book should I read? What do you recommend? And it's like, well, I don't know you. So I have no idea what to recommend right. to you. I was like, you got to talk to me a little bit first. Right. And then we'll figure out you know, what your need is and what you want. And so like the same for books, like I've never, I've never given somebody a book and just said, Hey, you need to read this. Like never have done that. <laughs> never, Cause that doesn't just work. Because, like, yeah. yeah. Because it's like you said, you know, a lot of people just read passively mm -hmm. and I don't read passively because I don't learn that way. Right. I am, I am actually slow to learn things and I have to experiment and experience it with more than just one sense. I need mm -hmm. multiple senses to internalize it. Mm -hmm. And I know from experience that when I've learned something, it stays with me forever permanently. Yeah. Cause you've put, you said it, your multiple senses, you put your hands on it, you felt it, yep. you smelt it, you listened to it, you saw it. Sometimes I, I gotta I, taste it. Sometimes you gotta taste it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, so along the lines of this, you are not recommending books to people that you don't really know, you don't understand what they're coming from, or even if the damn material in the book's gonna benefit them. Uh, right. My assumption is you learn that. Oh yeah, I learned that from from recommending books to people that they didn't do yep. anything with. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, because uh, I don't forget what I give somebody or what I remember. Like I have, we have a friend right now, Jesse. We have one friend that uh -huh. I gave, I gave him a book that he didn't ask for. He uh -huh. has not read it and it's been one year. Mm -hmm. That's no surprise. And so, so there's like, it's been, you know, 10 years since I made that mistake. Well, in year nine and a half, I made the mistake a second time. Yeah. But I guarantee you in the next 10 years, I won't make that mistake a third time. That's it. Done. No more. Done. So along the, the line of mistakes, what is a significant learning that you've had as a result of a pretty traumatic, painful misstep? It's going to be. Oh, yeah. I got to do the announcement for that fans only content. This clip is going to be available through patreon.com slash learnings and missteps. Signing up for the composite crew, which is like three bucks a month, gets you the LM backstage pass. We've got multiple levels. We love that you're here with us. And we are grateful for those of you who are willing to join the other patrons who have been contributing and help us keep this commercial free. Except for me, we're starting to get a little fancy. Check us out on YouTube. You'll notice a, a marked difference in the content we're putting out. So enough selling. Back to Felipe. And then own it. And then yeah. move. And so I have that lesson of my two years lost due to my own poor decision-making that helps me reinforce why I would rather be uncomfortable and honest than to have temporary comfort, dishonesty, and lose more time. I am no longer willing to lose time, Jesse. Mm -hmm. Can't, you ain't going to get it back. That's a phenomenal lesson that I think is going to provide a lot of value to a lot of people. Uh, you got to get there. It's liberating. Um, it's humbling. It makes us better people. 
And so in terms of better people, you're a pretty damn good person, Felipe. Oh, thank you, Jesse. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, what footprint do you intend to leave? Oh, the heart. We got the That's heart. The, got the little yeah. heart, baby. <laughs> what footprint do you intend to leave on the world? My intention for the world, Jesse, is that people recognize, and, and I'm helping to make that a possibility because it's not always obvious, that people recognize that the life you live right now is nothing more than a series of choices. And I want people to see that you can change those choices any day at any time, no matter what. You are not stuck in your circumstances. You are bigger than that. So it's my it's my mission, Jesse, to put forward to the world, just like my shirt says here, where I got my, my master's, we have a bright future. It is my intention, my action, my purpose to inspire people to see that option is available to everyone, yes. regardless of circumstance. And I want to pour and overflow my energy and enthusiasm, as I've even done with a lot of my friends and, and the change makers, as you know, I overflow that enthusiasm. I'm tapping into an infinite amount of energy to allow people to see the possibilities that are before them that sometimes they can't see because they feel trapped or they yes. think that the circumstances are beyond their control. And so that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to do, Jesse. That's what I'm going to leave yes. forward. And I don't care if people remember my name or if they remember the, the right, what the EBFC show stands for. That doesn't <laughs> matter to me. Yeah. What yeah. matters is that in every single interaction with every person that I meet, whether they it's direct or indirect that I give them the spark to see that there is an option to change their circumstances and to have an amazing and incredible life that they wake up excited for every single day. That's what I'm working towards, my friend. That's going to be my legacy. And I want to see that just cascading through. That's why I'm using technology, media, and all of my relationships to serve that purpose so that people out there listening, if you're listening out there, people, this energy is for you. I'm pushing it out there right through through the, the microphone, through the camera. I want you to know that you can have an amazing life. It's ready for you. And it's just a matter of making one decision and then another and then another. And then you wake up exuberant, joyful, happy, excited every day, all the time. Jesse, somebody hit me up yesterday. We got on the call, camera on. And I was smiling and I was listening to some music and the person made a comment on, boy, you are just always happy. And I said, yes, yes, I am because I'm alive right now. And so long as I'm alive, I'm going to tap into that infinite energy and overflow it into everybody that I interact with. And that's, that's what I'm going to do. That's my choice. And that's what I'm doing. Boom. And you're doing it. I, I've been around you long enough to see you just steadily doing it. You know, it reminds me of, uh, 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 a quote or a, a excerpt from Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, that totally transformed my life. Um, and I'm going to jack it up. So go ahead. I, I read it, it too. I hope. Right. So he, he taught he the the statement that just got stamped in my brain, or the idea that got stamped in my brain was, there's a space between stimulus and response, and within that space lies our power to choose then he goes on to say when we start choosing and recognize that that space exists it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger so when i have those major life pains that we all have yes the 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 pause to reflect and think about how will i respond has transformed my life entirely. And, and I think your energy just adds to that, right? Makes it like, yes, like that's where I want to be. That's where we want to be. We want to be having fun and we have complete power over it. So I, Felipe, however I can help you in that mission, let me know my man, because I want to contribute. I will. I'll keep calling on you, Jesse. You have been a friend, a confident, and a fellow change maker. 
we need more change makers in the world. So I thank you for all the things you've done for me. You are helping me and I will continue to call on you. Ten so we, we got lots of work to do, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly do, my man. And I'm happy we're doing it together. So was there anything that was that you really wanted to talk about that we missed? I mean, we talked about Scrum for like 10 minutes, so was, <laughs> <laughs> at least. People are going to be shocked yeah. that we talked about Scrum, Philippe. I, I, th I think the other thing I, I want to share, Jesse, to, to close it out is that, you know, the, the person you're listening to now is not, uh, I wasn't just like poof and I came into existence. This has been a journey that's still ongoing yep. and I'm still learning and growing and I've benefited I mean, beyond words, I have benefited from amazing human beings in my life, both living and not, you know, through the power of books and other media, I've been able to learn from people spanning time. And I think all of us in the human family, we're all in the same family, all on planet earth. We can learn from each other. We have an infinite amount of resources at our disposal, especially now in these times. And I know it's not always positive out there. You've, we've got a, a worldwide pandemic. People have died. I've lost family members. Everyone listening has known somebody that's been impacted by, by COVID. And these times are very difficult. And I want everyone listening to know that you're not alone. We're out here together. We're all part of the same family. And there are people that care whether you know them or not. There are strangers that care about you, even if you don't know them. You care. If you hear my voice, you can hear that I care about you. I need all of my people, all human beings listening to remember that we're all interconnected. And that's the one thing I want to share. And I just even talked about this with my parents last night. And my mother said, she's like, I can feel it even though you're 3000 miles away. And I said, every day you should feel it. We're all connected. And I love that. It's amazing. This experience that we have called living, Jesse, it's incredible. And words, even the words I'm using now, don't do it justice for how amazing and how much of a gift it is. There was a philosopher that lived some years ago, Jesse, and he said that he used to look out into the night sky and he, he was like camping or something. He was far from civilization and he saw all the stars shining. And he said, it was like looking at a fireworks show that's mm. on every single night, no matter where you are on planet earth, life is a celebration. Let's enjoy it. Let's live it. Let's celebrate. So I just, that's just the last thing I want to leave people with. That's how I see it, Jesse. It's a celebration. Let's celebrate together. Find somebody to celebrate with and let's have fun. Beautifully said. And we'll just let it end on that note. <laughs> Yep, that's my homie, Felipe Engineer Manriquez. When you get a chance, check him out, the EBFC show. He's got some fine content on YouTube, and he's available everywhere else you can find us. And, of course, we got to give a shout-out. And this one is a very, very special shout-out to Miss Mari Corpus, who is a dear friend and who was participating in our live streams of uh, 5S and relationships. <laughs> and so I got a little text from her. Her text says this. She says, Jesse, I dragged my behind up on a Saturday morning to attend your live stream, and I didn't get a shout out on LinkedIn. Apologies, Miss Mari. I have amended the shout outs on LinkedIn and... I'll give you an extra special shout out on this episode. And I hope to the rest of the LM family out there, give us some feedback. I'd love to shout you out. I'd love to learn where we can do better. Nothing but love for y'all. Peace. Man, you are one dedicated listener sticking with us all the way through to the very, very end. Please know that this podcast dies without you. And we invite you to share how the episode's impacting you, along with your thoughts, questions, and suggestions. You've been gracious with your time, so we added social media links in the show notes to make it super easy for you to connect with us. 
Be kind to yourself. Stay cool. And we'll talk at you next time.